Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this interwoven wirework bracelet. So this is actually a braided design that gets this really cool interwoven effect and if you're interested these will be available for sale in my shop along with other jewelry kits and tutorials, otherwise if you want to learn how you can make one for yourself then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. First of all the wire that I'm using is a regular round silver coated copper wire and the gauge is a 0.8mm. Then the beads we'll need are 3mm rounds. The specific ones I'm using are faceted blue coated hematite gemstone beads. Of course you can use whatever you want to just make sure the holes are large enough to take the wire through. Now we're going to finish off the ends of the braid with these ribbon ends here. They have these loops in them where we can attach our findings. So I'm using a lobster claw clasp and extender chain and a few jump rings to put it all together. Now we also need some glue for the ribbon ends, so I'm using this E6000 one that's going to create a strong bond. And as for the tools we need, I've got some flush cutters so we can cut our wires, tweezer nose and chain nose pliers for the ribbon ends and the jump rings, and finally a spring clamp to help hold the wires in place while we're braiding. So do make sure to check out the description box below the video for any useful links, otherwise let's get our materials and tools ready. And let's get started. So we then need to cut some lengths of wire and I have 18 lengths here of about 30 centimeters each and I made sure the ends are even and then put them into my spring clamp and this is going to be the starting point for our braid. So then the first thing I'm going to do is to separate my wires into groups. So I'm going to pick out three on one side and that's going to be one group and then go all the way through and make groups of three and just separate them out slightly from each other. So it looks a little something like this. Now each of these groups is gonna act as if they're one length in the braid. So technically it's a six strand braid, but within each group we just have multiple lengths of wire. So the most important thing throughout is to make sure the wires stay lined flat next to each other within each group. But otherwise, to get started, I'm just gonna do a few stitches in the braid without beads, just to have an end to it that we can use to finish off. But I'm just gonna start on one side. So I take the outer group, I'm just going to go over the next one in, make sure they stay lying flat next to each other in all the groups and you can just kind of help put a finger on the group to help put a bend into it. Then we need to bring it underneath the next group after that. Again, also making sure that that one's nice and flat within the group. So the basic principle of a braid is just constantly having over, under, over, under. So this is one side, I've used three groups. Now on this side here, I'm gonna take the outer group and instead of going over the next group like we did on this side, we need to come underneath. So bring it underneath, make sure they're flat next to each other, bring it in towards the middle and then it comes over the next one after that. Now in the middle here, we need to then cross them opposite as well, which means this one that we're just bringing into the middle now needs to come underneath the middle one that's already there. So just cross them if you need to. And then we have something that looks a little bit like this. Now don't worry if the beginning part here is a little bit messy. That's also why I like to do a bit of braid without beads, just so we can cut that off if we need to. And it's just to get into the rhythm of making the braid here. So I'm just gonna basically keep repeating this. So the very outer group, I'm gonna start on the right side again. I like to just push down the next group before I bring that group through and then also push up the inner one. Then I'm going to take that outer group and basically bring through those two. So it goes over under. As you can see, the crossover points are always going to be opposite each other. And bring that through and making sure that the wires are staying flat next to each other within the group. And then we can then flatten it back out and bring in the groups back down here. And then on the other side, same principle. The outer one is going to go into the middle. But before I do that, I'm just going to push the other groups up or down depending what position they're in. So I'm pushing them opposite to where they're coming from. And then I'm just gonna take that outer group and basically bring straight through those other ones, making sure they're flat next to each other. And then we can straighten out all these groups again. And then you can see in the middle is also naturally crossed over in the correct order. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this a couple of times. Like I said, just so I have a short length where we have no beads and also to feel like I have the rhythm of creating the braid. Now to start adding beads into the braid, it's only gonna be on the outside edges. So that means I'm gonna add them whenever I move the outside groups there. So before I move the group, I wanna add my bead. So I'm gonna single out the inner wire from that outer group that I'm gonna move next, add my bead, let it drop all the way down. Then I'm gonna just push it down till it won't go any further there. So it goes up against the side of the other group. Now you can then see there's a slight separation in the wires because of the bead there. Don't worry about that. Just bring the wires back together. Then 
just need to push the other groups a little bit into position first so we can bring the group that now has the bead on through there and you just want to make sure the bead stays in that corner there and it gets locked in place as we bring this through and again also that the wires are laying flat next to each other so I find that it helps put my fingers both on the back and the front of it and then just straighten everything back out then move to the other side now that outer group of wires I'm going to separate out the inner wire grab a bead and let it drop all the way down on that wire push it so it won't go any further and again you have that slight separation in the wire don't worry about that just bring the wires back together and then start to push the other groups so we basically create that path for the outer group to go through so hold on to the wire and make sure that bead is sitting in that corner and bring it straight through and into the middle and then we can just flatten everything else out and there we have our first two beads added one on either side so that's basically how we're going to do it throughout so i'm just going to show you again again the outer group i'm not going to go back to the right side separate the inner wire from that outer group add the bead let it drop down push it into place and then just push the other groups into position so we can join up those wires in that group with the bead and then bring it straight through into the middle and then flatten them back out go to the other side and basically repeat so we'll take the inner wire add your bead let it drop down then we just position the other groups so we open up that path we can bring this group of wires with the bead into the middle Again, making sure that that bead stays in the outer corner though and gets trapped in place and then just flatten everything back out. And also just keep smoothing out your wires here using your hands and fingers because it will get a bit out of shape as we're moving the wire around from the warmth of your fingers themselves as well. So you can see this is the basic principle and we basically just want to keep going like this, creating this lovely woven pattern and we just have these little beads that are pop of colour and sparkle on the outer edges. So just do this for however long a length you need. Once you've then made your full length and you reach the other end, then you just want to do a few stitches without beads so we can use this to finish off the ends with. And to do that, we're going to be grabbing our ribbon ends. So they're going to end up laying across the end like this, but of course that means we need to get rid of the excess here. So we need to cut through all these wires here. Now to know where you need to cut, I like to place my ribbon end where I want it to sit. So something like that. Then I can tell I need to cut here so the wires that are going to be left are going to fit nicely inside. And then... You can just start on one side, cut through, and then go all the way across to the other side. Just do a few wires at a time, like that. So we end up with a straight line across like this that'll fit nicely inside of the ribbon end. Now before we can attach the ribbon end, we're gonna need some glue. So I'm grabbing my E6000 here, and then I just want to get a little bit onto a toothpick. That's just gonna be my application tool, like that. And then what we need to do is add this inside of our ribbon end. Now we don't need to fill it up completely or anything. Just make sure to cover the inside walls or something like that. And then you can add some more glue if you need to. And I like to just put that on the end of my bracelet here where I cut it. So just cover the wires and make sure I get in between them as well. So that when we put the two pieces together and the glue dries, they're going to adhere really nicely and be a nice strong bond. Then we can just place the ribbon end back on. And I'm then grabbing my chain nose pliers or flat nose. And we just need to start squeezing this into place. So what I like to do is grab the bracelet in my hand and then put a finger on either end of the ribbon end here just to hold it in place. And then you just want to start squeezing it down. Now once it's almost all the way down, I like to just remove my fingers and make sure that it's still in the middle. And then we can go in and do our final squeezes. We make it really nice and tight. And I also always go in from the sides to close those up. And then of course, we need to repeat this on the other end as well. Then we have our loops where we can attach our findings. And then we just need to shape the bracelet here. So what I personally do is go in and start putting a curve into it. So I'm just going to go from one side to the other and gradually add in that curve and back and forth. I'm not going to go into one place and just put a big bend because that'll put it out of shape. But just back and forth like this. And then the aim is to get the two ends together. So we can of course use the clasp. You can also shape it around something that has the size and shape you want it to have, like a bracelet mandrel. But you can equally use your hands and fingers like this. And then we can use our clasp and our bracelet is finished. 
and ready to wear. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial for this interwoven wire work bracelet. And if you like braiding with wire, I have a playlist full of tutorials with braided wire work designs. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below. And don't forget they are available for sale in my shop as well. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.